So we figured out how to deal with powers of individual variables, but what about multiple terms? All right, so we're considering that previous example where we had multiple terms. Um, <clears throat> what do I do if I want to find the derivative of 3x squared minus 5x? Does anything stand out in the result? Uh, I actually didn't bring my 3.1 notes down from before, but if you look back at your 3.1 notes, we found that the derivative was 6x minus 5 in that example. And our question, does anything stand out in the result? Uh, if we take the derivative term by term, the derivative should be 3 times power rule, so 2 times x, minus 5 times power rule, 1 times x to the 0, or just 1. So I do get 6x minus 5. So this is what we should have had back in 3.1. We were in class for those notes. I didn't bring my notes to this classroom when I did the video, unfortunately, so I can't show you what I had in my notes. But look back in your notes for 3.1 example 1. We did this example by the limit definition. And we have the same thing that we now get from our power rule. That leads us to the sum and difference um, rule that you can take the derivative of two parts of an expression separately and then add up the results. As long as both are differentiable, as long as they're both defined. If any one part is defined, then the whole sum is going to be undefined as well. All right, that makes the derivative of any polynomial function easy because polynomial functions are always continuous, always smooth, no sharp points, so the sum and difference rule will apply for all polynomial functions. So, in the next case, I'm looking at the derivative of g of w. It's going to use the power rule, so it's going to be 2 times 3w squared plus 9 times 2w plus, well, it's negative 16, so plus negative 16. And then the derivative of a constant is 0. You don't have to write the plus 0 at the end, but for conclusion, we will have 6w squared plus 18w minus 16 for the derivative of this function. The more comfortable we get with derivatives, we're actually going to go right to that line, multiply the 2 and the 3 immediately, but I'm trying to write out my steps to make sure that we are understanding where each of those values comes from. So S of t. Similarly, we're going to start with negative 9.81 times 2 times t plus 43.2 times 1 plus zero, that's the derivative. If I multiply that by two, I get, I don't know, what's two times nine, 18? Hopefully I got my multiplication there right. Got my negative there, I almost forgot to put in. At t plus the 43.2. I've got a calculator here, I could have gotten it out, but trying to multiply that in, okay? So I should have the S prime of t function, let me put that back in there, s prime of t function is negative 19.62t plus 43.2. The constants don't even need to be integers. We can evaluate the derivatives of any polynomial function. All right. At the bottom of the page, we're looking at a new rule, the natural exponent rule. We might be tempted to use the power rule when a function looks like e to the x, but that is problematic. Remember that the power rule is used for variable base numeric power. That's when I can use the power rule. If I have something like e to the x, the variable is in the power, so what do you do with it to find its derivative? Okay. So I'm going to flip, um, I think the next page, um, or maybe talk about it in a second. I'll talk about that in a second, but to the next page. So remember what, when we first learned about the number e, it was probably defined kind of haphazard like vertical asymptotes were, but we can do better. The number e is defined and was originally defined to satisfy this definition, this limit definition. There's a full proof in 3.3, so we'll um, see, in section 3.3 in the book, so we'll see that um, as you do some more uh, research later, okay? Okay. Um, so, Euler's number is very special. It comes from a special limit. Okay, and if you look at the family of curves, y equals b to the x, only when b is e does the y coordinate always equal its slope. Or, what that means, since the y coordinate always equals its slope, the slope is the derivative, that the derivative 
is the function value itself. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That is the only function whose derivative is itself. It's a very, very unique function. Okay. So now I can expand the number of things I can find the derivative of from looking at this function, f of x. Its derivative, the derivative of e to the x, is exactly the same thing, e to the x, plus 14 e to the x. Well, it's a constant 14 times the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, minus, and then a power of x uses the power rule. So it'll be 3 times 2 thirds x to the 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third. If I simplify that, 14 e to the x and e to the x can be added up to 15 e to the x. They could have been added there as well. It was just a matter of making sure we could do the derivative separately. Together is fine. 15 e to the x minus uh, 3 times 2 thirds is 2, uh, and then I can write it as x to the negative 1 third. When the power form is used, I don't need to go back to radical form, and power form is used in the original, and it's debatable whether or not you'd like to put that in a denominator, it depends on the context, so I think leaving it alone right here is perfectly reasonable. If you're going to solve it or something with it, after this, you may want to put that in the denominator to find um, places with the functions undefined, etc. But for right now, we'll leave that alone. Okay. All right, in example four, we want to write the equation of a line that is tangent to this line at x equals one. Well, I've already found the derivative. So if I want the equation of a tangent line, I know that its slope, the tangent slope, is f prime of one. Okay, so. And that's 15 e to the 1 minus 2 times 1 to the negative 1 third. 1 to any power stays 1, except for 0 power. So that's going to be 1. And so I have 15 e minus 2 for my slope. Okay. To write the equation of a line, I need an ordered pair and a slope. I just have an x value, so I better use the original function to find the y value. So the original function gives me e to the 1 plus 14e to the 1 minus 3 times 1 to the 2 thirds. That's 15e minus 3. Okay. So remember to find slope, we can use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I now have values for y1 x1 and m. I can plug those in and I can find the equation of the line. So it's going to be y minus quantity, so parentheses, um, y1, which is 15 e minus 3, equals m, which is 15 e minus 2 quantity, times x minus 1 quantity. If I distribute, it's y minus 15e plus 3 equals um, 15e minus 2 quantity x minus 15e plus 2. I'm distributing the negative 1 on these two so that I'll be able to add these over. Because when I add over the 15e, here they're going to cancel. And when I subtract over the 3, those are going to be like terms. So it's not a conventional y equals mx plus b because of the e in there, but the equation will be y equals, so the slope is 15e minus 2, so 15e minus 2 times x minus 1. So this is the equation of the line that is tangent to this curve at the point where x is equal to 1.